going to say that two of the most important characteristics for a person getting into science drawing is number one, that they like to learn about the subject matter that they're doing, and number two, that they have some potential element of patience. Because a lot of science illustration is the pursuit of detail. You know, and when you're when you're doing a drawing of a fish, and you're looking at the fact that the fish on the side facing you has 287 scales on the side of that fish, um, you don't want it to become such an onerous, boring task that you end up just flicking off little lines to stand for where scales right. might have been. Impressionism. <laughs> <is> <laughs> Impressionism <laughs> is probably not your best call right. at this moment, uh, and so. Uh, it's like when I first started drawing, I did a, an illustration of a uh, silver line June bug from Colorado. And I tried to make a, like a 10 inch tall drawing with a number triple zero pen, which to stipple shade correctly would have taken me roughly from then till now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, so at some point you have to be realistic right. about how much lifespan you want to put into something. Right. But on the other hand, uh, being able to have patience, to pursue the details, it doesn't take as long as you think. Right. Uh, but yet, that's what really makes a drawing stand out mm -hmm. in this way and yeah. useful for the people. Um, it's like uh, when you do a drawing of a fish, so many people when they do a drawing of a fish, their temptation is just to make, just fill that area with a bunch of scales. But yet, if you're an expert on the salmonid fish, or let's say the cyprinid fish, you need to know how many scales there are between the lateral line and the dorsal line of the fish. You can't just say, well, it's something like this. Okay. You know, it makes a big difference if it's 12 or 18. You know, And so you really have to have the patience to settle into some of that. But once you do, um, it does not become a terrible thing. So we really try to introduce our artists you know, they're in hospital beds typically yes. or in uh, some sort of therapy class and we don't want to send in, you know, oil-based paint kits. You know, I'm sure the staff there would really love seeing mm -hmm. that. Uh, sure. But what we try and do is we try and keep it simple to pencil mm -hmm. for them to mm -hmm. just start learning. Right. Uh, and again, you mentioned before that, you know, you can't grind your pencil into the paper. You know, sure. The yeah. right. guy you're working for is going to crumble it up and throw it away. <laughs> but uh, I understand and one, one can well imagine that th this field really adapts very well to computer art. Absolutely. Uh, computer illustration. And you're yes. uh, doing that mostly now yourself. Yes, in fact, uh, all the drawings I do at present, I do on a computer. Um, there are several programs that allow you to draw on a computer that can be quite powerful. Um, the Adobe uh, company makes uh, Adobe Illustrator, which is my, uh, since I was in on the ground floor of it, I've kind of stuck with it. But there are others. And uh, these allow you to compose uh, the drawing in a way that is encoded in the kind of language a computer speaks. So when you get a drawing done on a computer software, your every command is going to be represented when this is output onto paper or the TV screen or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. um, when you do, a, say, a watercolor on paper, um, ultimately, in order to be useful to the digital world, it's going to have to be scanned. It's maybe going to have to put on a process camera or something. And in that sense, um, it sort of makes your drawing subject to all of these transitions or the people who work them. I used to always say that uh, uh, Illustrator uh, freed me up from the drinking habits of the guy who used to run the process camera. <laughs> that might have been me. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, um, when you specify an object uh, that is 3% cyan, 12% yellow, 14% magenta, and 36% black, uh, that's exactly what's going to go into the plate making reading machine. It's not going to be something like that shade or you know right. what I thought it might have been as it reflected off the table with all the other lights in the room on. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's actually going to be the actual rendering you that you put on it. So in that sense. Even if it took you twice as long to do the drawing digitally as it would have on paper, by the time you've resized it a couple of times and then broken it into a four-color piece, you are you are light years ahead of the game compared mm -hmm. to the, even though you were able to slap it down on paper quite quickly. By the time you've completed the process, you're you're way up there. 
And again, you mentioned earlier that uh, you can do it here, but you can also shoot it around the world to somebody oh, yes. in China yes. that might need That's it. That's right. You can, you can or transform it into a number of file formats <laughs> that are easily attached to emails. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now, of course, uh, the vagaries of increasing computer capacity mean that you can send a pretty sophisticated drawing uh, to just about anyone in the world who has a more or less uh, recent, uh, not so kerosene powered computer. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned earlier also off camera that uh, it's also good for collecting your portfolio. That's true. Um, whenever someone wants a portfolio nowadays, it's probably going to be a digital version that they want. They don't, they're not interested in you endangering originals by sending them through the snail mail, those big cards, and you right. certainly don't tubes. have the funds to uh, to fly to everywhere that might be interested in your work. Right. So having a nice digital version of a portfolio that is uh, in PDF format so mm -hmm. that it can be read by any computer on yeah. the planet uh, can be very useful because mm -hmm. this is this is how it's done in the modern uh, the modern world. Okay. Wonderful, uh, Peter. I think that sums it up pretty good. Uh, lots Thank of good information. Much. Very interesting. Uh, Fascinating, all the different kinds of subjects you can deal with, from tiny little bugs to you know ancient forests and things like that. I hope right. uh, all of our viewers will enjoy that. Uh, some of them actually go into the field because it sounds like it's very rewarding. I recommend it highly. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.